Welcome. Today we're going to talk about roles and permissions and how they're applied to the Zoho Creator platform. Our agenda for this video, first we're going to take a look at our example company, in this case Zilker Home Appliance Repair. We're going to take a look at the hierarchy of the company, discuss the roles, what their level of access needs to be, and this will give us our basis as we move forward and look at how the rules and settings included in Zoho Creator can be implied to ensure that the roles and permissions are set up the way that they need to be. Next, we'll take a look at a few different features that can also affect that structure. Uh, and lastly, we will um, do a quick view of adding users. So Zilker Home Appliance Repair. Within the company, we have three different levels of stakeholders. Our top tier, our top role, is our business owner, who also in this case is serving as our admin. Next, we have our sort of mid-tier, our managers, and last, we have our technicians, who are gonna be the main group of users within the solution. So looking at what each role needs to do, uh, the business owner, the admin, they're really gonna need the ability uh, to affect anything within the solution. So they're gonna need access to add, modify, delete employees, customer complaints, um, customer info and orders, and pretty much anything else um, that the solution needs to be able to capture, needs to be able to create, needs to be able to do. Uh, the business owner is gonna need the ability to see all of that and change whatever they need to change to ensure that their process is being followed. Next up, we have the manager. Um, so they're going to have more limited access, um, but they're still going to have more visibility, especially than the technicians. Uh, you can see one of the big areas that is missing from the manager is that they don't have oversight into any of the administrative areas. So the employees, anything that was done in the back office, all of that will be removed from the manager's plate within the solution. And they'll really only have the ability to add, modify customer info, order details, and then read only access to the complaints module to ensure that they understand the feedback of their customers, but aren't able to sway that or change that in any way um, to affect the visibility of it. Lastly, what does the technician need to do? So as our sort of lowest level but largest level of users, uh, they really only need access to the data and the components that are gonna allow them to do the tasks at hand. Um, so this is gonna be our very limited access. And as we like to say, uh, it's better to make this as limited as possible and make them ask to do things rather than giving them the ability to do you know, more and possibly mess things up. Um, so, you know, this hierarchy is good to keep in mind to ensure um, as we go through the rest of the settings that you're thinking about how this would be applied to your own company um, and ensuring that uh, you keep the access to uh, the minimal amount that's needed for each of these roles to be able to do their jobs. So now let's look at the roles and permissions settings. But first, let's talk about roles and permissions a little bit and their definition within Zoho Creator. So first off, every user that's added to the system will need a defined role and permission set to ensure that they have access and visibility to what they need. I'm gonna say this probably a few times in the video, but a major piece and the, probably the biggest thing to take away from this is that roles within Z Zoho Creator control what data someone can see. So it's all about the visibility of the data for roles. Permissions, they control what actions, the components that the person can interact with. Uh, and they're more about the access rather than the data. So for permissions, there's a few different levels that you can apply permissions to. The first and sort of the top level is the module or component level. And that's really giving them permissions to access the different components within the solution, the forms, the reports, the pages. Next up, we have the record level. So this is for any records that have already been created. They can view, they can create, they can edit, they can delete records. 
uh, we can give them access to all of that, remove access from all of that, um, really get a little bit more granular with the permissions to ensure that they're not able to affect, destroy any data that we need. Next, we have the feature level. So there's a few different features that have been added to the records as far as being able to import data, export data, um, and add comments. Uh, we can control whether uh, each of the users has the ability to do any of those, as well as getting very, very granular with the field level. So even if we give them access to view a record or edit a record, we can actually lock different fields within that record to ensure that they can't change like a billing address so that our invoices are going to the correct place. These are all the different sort of like levels of permissions. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about it and show you within the system exactly how these can be um, applied to each of the users. So here we're adding a permission set. The name of the permission set is technician. Our description, we're just putting in some uh, details about what uh, this use for the permission set is going to be. Our next section we will probably disable these for this level of user, but I wanted to make sure that this was visible. Um, and this is our API and security permissions. So not only can we affect the solution within the different components and all the different levels of permissions, but there's also some, some global permissions that are applied as well. Um, so API access, we can turn that off for different permission sets. PII and ePHI actually have to do with personal information. Um, so personal identification information for PII and then electronic personal health information um, can both be hidden from this level or this, um, this user permission set uh, to ensure clients with HIPAA and the, the different groups um, that you know, may have oversight over how data is um, shared. Lastly, you can see we have the set permissions. So this is really where that um, different permission levels we just look at come into play. So the first, the access, uh, is gonna give them the ability to fill out that form. So here the technicians really only have a access to the job sheets. Uh, next view is gonna give them the ability to see different reports attached to that module. So in this case, uh, we haven't chosen a report to give them yet, um, but we could give them visibility into the installation calendar, the technician Kanban, or the ability to see all of the job sheets. Next, we get, as I said, a little bit more granular. We can uh, give them the ability to edit the records that they're able to see, um, delete the records that they're able to see, and then uh, when we go to the next sort of slide, you'll be able to see some of the additional um, feature level permissions that we can add. So here is a uh, example of one with more access. So this isn't the technician. Um, this might be, you know, a manager or an admin uh, who's got access to more of the modules. Uh, they have the ability to view quite a few different pieces, edit a lot of that data only able to delete products. And then in the more section, you can see we've given them the ability to import, export, um, modify, uh, print, and then add comments and read comments. So next, let's talk about roles. So typically roles are modeled after an organization's hierarchy. And I say that just to say this, that is not necessary. So there may be cases where the CEO is less technically adept, where maybe the, the business owner shouldn't be the one controlling the process, the solutions, or they don't want to have that responsibility. Uh, you could have an admin sort of sit above the CEO and ensure that they have access to everything, which obviously wouldn't match the hierarchy of the company. Roles, again, are strictly about the data that's visible within an application and ensuring that the records that are exposed to each of the different levels are only the records that they need to see. So here we'll take a look at the roles for the users. Uh, again, we're mirroring the Zilker home appliance hierarchy. We have the owner, we have the manager, we have the technician. If we wanted to add a new role, we would just click on the button 
and that would bring up our configuration window. We can put in the name of this new role. We then have to choose who the new role reports to. Um, so in this case, we're setting up the technician. They're gonna report to the manager. We could then put in some description as well as choose whether the data that's shared, or sorry, as to whether the, um, the data is shared with uh, the peers at that level. So each role as you're building it is gonna fall under um, one of the other roles. The owner is gonna be that top role that's always inherently there. So you won't really be adding a new owner. So you'll always be choosing who it reports to. You can put in different roles that report to the same role. So we have our managers, we have our technicians, but if we also wanted to put in the branch of the company, for the admin side. Maybe there's an office manager and um, bookkeepers or something like that that we need in the solution. We could have them listed here as well, have the office manager report to the owner, have the bookkeepers report to the office manager, and that hierarchy would continue to grow in that way. The shared data with peers is an interesting option. Um, so by default, the technician is only gonna be able to see the information that's applicable or that they have entered. If they click on that shared data with peers for that role, then everybody within that role would be able to see the information that was entered from everybody else within that role. So the technicians would be able to see all of the job details that were entered by technicians. And we'll go through actually another way that you can affect um, the visibility of data here in a second. So next up within the roles, um, something interesting to talk about is role hierarchy and record owners. So for each of the modules, we can actually choose whether we want the role hierarchy to be applied or not. So if you had a process like, let's say vacation requests, where everybody would need to see everybody's vacation requests, uh, you know, you need to know that the business owner was out, the manager was out, the technicians were out. You could actually disable the role hierarchy for that certain module, and then everybody would have visibility as if the role hierarchy didn't exist. Next up, we have our record owners. So by default, the owner of the record is gonna be the person who entered it. We just talked about this a little bit with the technicians and how if you don't choose the shared data with peers, um, it would only be visible to the person who entered the information. This is where you can affect that ownership. So by default, added user. If you want to change that, you actually need to go through a, a couple steps that we'll walk through in a second. So in changing the ownership of a record, the first thing that you would need to do is add a users field from the special field section in um, the application builder, or sorry, the form builder, so that you would have that user field, you could set it up in the form, and then the person who's entering the information could actually choose who owns that record in the future. Uh, this is especially useful where um, different tasks are being passed from one user to another. Uh, you know, you wouldn't want the task to live with the record or the, the user who added the record. Uh, you would want it to move along. So the user who's adding it could choose the next person in line. It would then be handed to them. They would be able to affect it. They could choose the next person in line and it could be handed up the chain like that. You may also want every single record that came in for a certain form. Uh, to be owned by a manager or the business owner or whoever it may be, you could then set it so that their only choice is that individual so that it's always passed to that person. But to change the ownership of a record, you do need to utilize the user's field within the form builder. Once that field is entered, we can go back to that manage role hierarchy we can go to job sheets and you can now see that the field that we entered users is now included in the dropdown for the record owner. You can have as many different user fields as you want within a form, 
but only one of them can be specified as the record holder and record owner within the role hierarchy. All right, so next let's talk a little bit about data sharing rules. So we've talked a lot about the roles and the visibility of data, record owners, all of that information. Now, if let's say we had a technician who was the lead technician, they didn't have the seniority to really be the manager, but we've given them the responsibility to have the oversight over all the rest of the technicians and ensure the, the jobs are being completed correctly. That technician would need a different role's visibility settings to ensure that they're able to do their job. The way to do that is through our data sharing rules. So here as the third choice under users, we can go to it. Once we choose it, we can add a new rule. In this case, we're gonna share um, our data. We're going to give a user, Alvin in this case, the ability to see everything that the CEO sees. So um, even though he may be a technician, we can basically overwrite his role's visibility settings by utilizing um, this, this rule setting, basically. Lastly, we're gonna talk really quickly about adding users. This is done through the management of users on the creator um, toolbar. Uh, within it, there's a big blue button to the right for add user. Once you click on that, this window will pop up. You'll put in the first name, last name, the email address, uh, you can choose whether to send a notification mail. You can choose whether they have access to integration flows. And then you can add applications that the user is included in. So in this case, we're adding John Doe. We're giving him access to the application Zilker Home Appliances as a user with the role of technician and the permission set of technician. Now, the next section that you have there, applications as developer, that can also be utilized when you have a user that needs to be able to affect the structure, a solution of a process. You can make them a developer and then they're able to go in and actually change the different forms, reports, um, components that are included in that solution. Those are probably gonna be pretty limited. So most people that you add are gonna be um, applications as user, but I definitely wanted to make sure that that was highlighted to ensure you knew that that could be affected as well. You could add as many applications as they need um, the ability to see, and then when they log in, they would see the applications that have been added um, for their use. So to recap, we talked about the hierarchy of Zilker Home Appliance Repair, talked about the different roles that exist. We then use that basis to talk about the roles permissions, uh, the rules and settings within Zoho Creator that allow you to set those up. Uh, we then talked about how you can utilize some of the other features like data sharing rules uh, to affect and overwrite some of the roles, visibility options. And then lastly, we talked a little bit about adding users. Uh, I hope this was educational and I appreciate your time.